Gold Cup Day. So the first race on Gold Cup Day is the Triumph Hurdle. So prices are Aqua Shakira 3 to 1, Mr. Adjudicator 8 to 1, Stormy Island 8, We Have a Dream 8, Far Class 10s and Redison 10s and 20 to 1, <coughs> bigger than the rest. Start with Aqua Shakira unbeaten this season. Every race she has been at Chetland. That is surely Stanter. She's kind of following the same route that Debbie decided last year. Horses, she wasn't very impressive the last day. That horse was a good winner the last race though as well. Mm -hmm. I think the ground was against her as well. She still managed to win. She got mayor's allowance and everything else to go with. Yeah, that's a good uh, Mr. Judicator. Uh, won well in Leperstown last time. Yeah, he looks good now. Second run, he improved a lot for his, from his first. Decent enough flat horse for, for, for Andrew Bowling? No? Somebody? Yeah, well, I'm moving, huh? No. Check that out then. Morty. Chosen Morty. Was it? Yeah. Oh, well, that was so long. He's a better hurdler than he was a flat horse. Uh, Stormy Island. Won by 58 lengths at Ferry House. I would have, I would probably have, beaten up. I would assume Mr. Judy here is William is better, better off. They're all talking like Story Islands. The, the best of his juvenile. He's actually said Story Islands is my best juvenile. The one I like in this is Alan King's horse, Redition. Yeah. Let's go too. Would you give S. Poor Delan another chance? No. I would. Like, one reason. He'd be the first time a race has been ran to suit him. He needs a breakneck gallop. You can see it, every race is ran, he's been pulling, been pulling, been pulling. It's the only race that's going to be running fast enough for him. At 25 to 1, he was second favourite this time two weeks ago. It's a huge price of that. Sausage Ranger. He's going to win the handicap juvenile hurdle by the winter. It's a big shout now. He's going to win the proud winter. Gary Moore, I think he trains him. He does. He looks tailor made for that. I honestly have no big feeling in this boy. Relation, I think he'll, uh, he'll go close. I never, re I never really liked this race. Yeah. Yeah, After Shakira has the form, has a course form. Mr. Judicator is really, best. You need a real, real tough horse to win this. And I don't know if Apple Shakira has it. She battled well the last time though. She pulled away from the end when Barry got stuck into her. It's at the price that I take a chance on S Park, the line, the land, the name, whatever the hell it's called. 25 to 1. Worst shocks have happened in this race. True. Uh, just on the on the fact that it's going to be run to Silt. Right? As Dave said, I think Redition looks at Norway. He's a good record in Alan King as well, but he yeah. has a decent juvenile, he usually pays to them well. He won at Kempton, was it? He won at Kempton. You can go back, I'd say, for the Adonis at Kempton in, a, in, a, in a couple of weeks. Boys in the elite, elite racing coat colours. White and the black. Black circles, three black circles. Oh, elegant colours? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. It's, it's a race I don't really want to get stuck into either way. It's the first race, you just. You're it's right, it, it'll be hard to pick the winner off. I'd probably back Radish on the day, but it's going, I wouldn't be surprised at all if he bombs out and he's nowhere. Uh, it's, just a matter, it's just a matter of whatever you like yourself at the day. Yep. Yeah, so I think one of Mullins, third or fourth strings could be there as well. Yeah. Have a look to. It's a, it's a minefield at the end of the day. So um, from one minefield onto the next, 
out of Bartlett. So we have Crack and Smart, 7 to 1. Next Destination, 7 to 1. Uh, Centini, 12s. Chief de Zobo, 14s. Uh, Duke de Janeiro, 16s. Gellibert, 16s. Red River, 16s. Black Cop, 20s. Mr. Whipped, Poetic Rhythm, Sancro, 20s. And 25 to 1 bigger. Let's have a look at that. <laughs> Next destination is the only one that stands out to me as of now. Vindication is the one I'm going to go for if he goes for the race. I think he's going 2-4. Yeah, I, I don't... I, leading what I read last week, I don't even think they're going to If he, I think if he went for this, he'll have a really good chance in him. I do think they're probably right, he probably won't. There's not... There's not standing out like at all. If he don't go for it, then... Obviously, Sam Crow is probably more than likely going to go for the the uh, the Neptune, so it'll be next to the next destination. But he won't be a great price. He's seventh. He won't be on the day though. He has the form. He has that. The, he's the type of horse that can run well in it. What price you paying for? No Do you think that Crack and Smart could turn the form around with him? Not. I think there's still improvement coming from next destination. What about Santini? Too inexperienced. Yeah, it's a hard race. Black Ops as well, it is. I like him whatever race you're running. Tuffy, now that one. You want to stay away from it, sir? So. I think I, I know this is clear. I give Carter McKay a chance over this. He looked even over when he ran two or four. <laughs> Or Christmas, you still look like you need further. Not the bad. Uh, and then it's Storm and Parky bombed out at Christmas. Oh, not Christmas, that Dublin Festival. Where's your rhythm? Probably won't run them. <coughs> blow by blow? Forgotten horse. Is that good luck? No, probably not. Ah, I'm drawing straight to next destination. That's, uh, yeah. Next destination. It's not a race I've overly much interest in. Right? Mm. Shit, he's all over, I think. Who trained? That really is Arsenal. No, Nicky Anderson. Nicky Anderson. Indication for me with the hope that he turns up. Yeah, I'm next destination. The fact that I think he's still more improving to come from. Right, stop. On to the showpiece, the Gold Cup. Mike Bite, four Native River, 13 to 2. Sizing John Sevens, Club the Vic, 10. Road to Respect, 10. Coney Island 12s, or Duke 16s, 20 to 1 bigger. My boy hasn't a hope in hell of winning this. Why do you think that? He's not good enough. No? No. Mm. It sounds like Brian's going to disagree with you. I like this. Finally getting an out when they're looking. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I like Sizing John. Yeah. I think he's going to win it back to back. I can't desert him now. You shouldn't. I ran to the rate all year about this man. You shouldn't desert. I also like Coney Island. Right, yeah. Yeah, I hope, well, I hope not back for the World Cup already. I hope some of them go for the right, yeah, because there's too many of the shows in the world. I can take it. My point, I, I just can't have him. He's jumping, I think. He's jumping and he'll go off for a pint mm -hmm. again. That was a bad RSA. Yeah, Whisper hasn't told the form up, so. Well, he ran well in the, the Hennessy. Terrible, terrible race. Even Patrick Mullen said it. The, the, the uh, form is nowhere be near. Don't or cause I bet you by a hit. The form is nowhere near a Gold Cup standard. Usually the Hennessy, the winner of the Hennessy is a Gold yeah, Cup. Yeah, that's horse. true. Because Total Recall is not a Gold no. Cup horse. And Whisper's not a Gold Cup horse. No. And the 
So it doesn't. That was an awful King George. It event. doesn't surprise me that Lloyd Boyd was hammering with Sparlasha. Yeah. We're just not up the standard. They were horses. And Mike Boyd was what was he then before about three days ago? Now it's four to one. There's no one. Can't have him on. Oh, can't have him in the slightest. I've got a free bet from like giving to someone else. I like a few horses in it, but if I was had the name, the colours. But you're having a little chap, Mac. What? Rule to respect. Oh, no one needs shits himself in the I know, I know, <laughs> no one needs it. It's a bad record at Cheltenham. But the horse won at Cheltenham last year. He's kind of been in around the top Irish form all year. He should have won that race at uh, Down Royal. So um, something went wrong with the camera and the sound by the, in the middle of going through the Gold Cup. So I, we were still talking, I can remember what we were saying. So where we, where we just cut off, Dave was um, talking us through his pick, which was Road to Respect. He really likes him. He likes that. He's an improver. Uh, he's a good jumper and so on. But I was saying, question the form was... Back of the flow and Outlander finishing so close and with the Christmas chase. The race that Sice and John uh, went off favour on. But he's I don't think he has what it takes to win the race. He has, I think he'll run well. But when it comes down to the crunch, I don't think he'll have that extra bit that'll see him up the hill. There's one more also, also touching on which was uh Edwolf, the winner of uh, of the Leprosound Chase at their big festival meeting there a few weeks ago. It was the horse, if you remember, that was pulled up in a four mile when he looked like winning and he was practically dead um, going off the track. But Joseph O'Brien has been following a miracle get this horse back and he had a very good and taken, staying performance. Whether he would have beat um, Claude de Vic if he stood up is a question now, but. He's still a huge price at 33 to 1. So I wouldn't put anyone off having an each way bet on him, especially with Joe Soul Brian trading him. And also Brian also made a case for Sizing John as well, the horse that I also like. So the conclusion was me and Brian really like Sizing John to make it back to back wins. And Brian um Dave liked uh Road to Respect for on a huge race. So that was the gold cup verdict more or less so now i'll just run through a few of the handicaps and horses i to think uh, stood out as big enough prices so on day one the ultimate handicap and um, i was looking at acapella bourgeois i know he has to run well at all this season for willie monless but i think with a bit of a break a bit of sun on his back and the return to this trip will suit him very well and he could be very well handicapped on last year's form when he absolutely destroyed the field, he was at Navin or Nace. And he is currently a 14 to 1 shot for the ultimate. I'd be very interested in him now if he went for that. And another one in that, that Alan King has more or less said that he's going to run in this, which was a bit surprising, is Janwart. Unless he's at the ring getting a very nice mark and he's running in this, he's currently a 10 to 1 to 6 to 1 in places. Looking at that now, if his jumping holds together, which has been his downfall over fences, his hurdle form is head and shoulders above the rest of these on over a longer trip, as in from his entry win over three miles. Uh, another one on the, uh, on the first day in the Close Brothers is Ted Walsh's and he's second now. He's been running second behind very, very good horses all season. And I think he's going to get a fair hand handicap mark on what he's done. And I think he's a very good horse that can run a huge race. Uh, he's currently a 16 to 1. Uh, so one in the car cup I like is Pinchu, uh, Colin Tizard's horse for Alan Alan, Alan Potts. Uh, he run, won a big pot at uh, was a, I think it was Chel uh, one of the festivals last year, and uh, he's currently sixteen to one shot. He's done nothing really this year, but I think the return to better ground will see him improve a stone. So he's currently sixteen to one shot at the moment on. These are without decorations or anything like that, so I think he'll have a good shot at 16-1 to 1 if he has a fair weight. Uh, on to the Fred Winter. There's two I really like in this. And one is uh, Sussex Ranger. He finished second to We Have a Dream at Chepstow, and he put it up the whole way. 
and he has a he has a profile of a horse that could go very very well in the Fred Winter. He's battle hardened. He's he goes with the pace. He's very very tough juvenile. So I think at fourteen to one he has a huge chance. And there's one I think is being absolutely laid out for this is Paul Nichols, active valor. He was a decent horse on the flat. I think he won first time out. He won first time out on ground he didn't like, and he bombed out in his next two races on heavy ground. He's a good ground horse. This has a laid out job written all over, it. and it's sixteen to one. I think he's a very very good bet. The next uh, the attempts final I'm going to go through, and so if two in this. There's one horse on his farm two, three years ago. He's absolutely chucked in. And he seems to be getting a little bit of spark back in him, into him. And that's Nicky Henderson's beat that. If they thought his, his time was up, they would have stopped him. They would have moved him on. But they seem to be sticking with him. And that gives me enough confidence to back him in that at a 25 to 1. And there's another one at 25 to 1 in this that I really like as well. It's to be fair. He's the horse last year that racked up all the wins. He went seven in a row, I think, and he went off favour for this race last year. He's currently, I think, six pounds lower than last year. And he's coming into this off a lighter campaign. And he ran in a race, I can't remember where it was, but he finished third. And it was a very, very promising run. And he's been put away for this. So to be fair, 25 to 1 is a very interesting bet. Uh, another one we go on to is the... Brown Advisory Handicap Chase. There's two I've picked in this as well. One would be Fergal O'Brien's Barney Dwan. The only worry with him would be his jumping over fences around Cheltenham. But he's a good engine. He's starting to get the hang of things. He's won his last race in the 14 to 1. He's a good shot. And another one who needs good ground no matter what. He's a fairly progressive last year, Peregrine Run. Trained by a small trainer in Ireland. He's currently 20 to 1 shot. He's been laid out for this and he's going to run a huge race if the ground is good. Uh, next on to the Kim Muir and this race just has Couture written all over it. This will be a horse I say Nina will be on and it'll go off favour. It's currently favour at 11 to 2. I think it's going to be shorter on the day. This has been his target all year and I think this, this horse is going to take all the beating in this race. Next is the County Hurdle. The horse in this that is absolutely, he's about 20 pounds well in on what he does in the flat. And that's Max Dynamite. But the only thing is the thing can barely jump a hurdle. If all of a sudden you decide to remember how to jump a hurdle, this thing would win by half the track. It's so well handicapped, it's not even funny. And there's one that I wrote down before he ran on Saturday, was Cliffs of Dover. Before he decided to think he was a sprinter, the second the tapes went up over the weekend and just ran his race after two furlongs. But at, he's 33 to 1. I'd like to see him before the race before I went anywhere near him, but he, before he was out injured, he racked up a six wins in a row, I think, and he looked very promising juvenile. But he needs to, I think he needed that. He was just mad to get back at the racetrack and he ran, he thought he was using a boat at one stage and he went about 50 lengths clear. And obviously he dies near the finish and pulled him up. And another one I like is Call Me Lord. Uh, Simon Manier horse. Um, currently a 10 to 1 shot. Very tough horse. He has a bit of class to him. I think he can run a huge race. Uh, he's currently 10 to 1. Um, right, on to the Martin Pipe. Plain and simple. Whatever James Bone is riding. He is absolutely stealing three pounds and he's going to be more savvy in these races, in the boys race. So I said, whatever he's riding, have a serious look at because he's going to more or less have the choice of the best horse in the race. Um, the Fox Hunters. What I really like in this is last year's second, Wonderful Charm. I think they rode in last year um, worried that he wouldn't get the trip. But he got the trip very well and ran well for a long way in the national then after that. He run, won his recent comeback with Sam Whaley Cohen on him with his head in his chest. So he's currently 6 to 1 second favourite. I think he'd run a huge race if not huge race if not win it. I really like him as 6 to 1's wonderful charm for the Fox Hunters. And lastly, the Grand Annual. There's three in this that are very interesting. And one is Vanato. He's 
he was trained by Nicky Henderson and he ran in the I think he was second it was a dual van or second to dual van in the Arca. Second or third to dual van in the Arca anyway. Um he's formed petered out dramatically. Now he's had to change his stables and he's been building up quite slowly this season. It seems to be coming to a peak now and I think he's going to be laid out for this race for the pipes and he's currently a 12 to 1 shot and he's going to run a very good race. Another one is Patrick's Parks. He won the big handicap uh, at the Leprechaun Dublin Festival meeting uh, ridden by Rachel Blackmore and that was only his second run for Willie Mullins and it was a huge improvement from his first run to his second and I think Again, he could run a huge race. And there's one at 60 to 1 that has a bit of class and is an underrated horse but needs needs um, spring round. But I actually won a quite good race over over the winter. And that is Jessica Harrington's Woodland Opera. He won, won a big handicap chase at the Punchtown Festival last year and won it by a good, a good 10 lengths. And he'd be inter interested at 16s. So um, that's all the chatting stuff done and dusted, lads. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed all the videos. And keep commenting at the end. I keep getting back to everyone that comments. And again, lads, thanks for watching. And just like and subscribe.